plan to get the train, however it was fully booked by the time we tried to book it. it. We left it quite late, we only tried to book it yesterday so if you are looking to get the train try and book it in advance because it does book up very very quickly especially during Ramadan. The bus works out at £28 for two people and the train is actually triple that just for one so it is quite a big difference in money as well. It depends on what you're willing to spend I guess as well and the bus journey just takes around five and a half hours and the train journey takes just under two so it's not too bad our bus journey to Mecca was like well over nine hours so this should feel like an absolute breeze in the park Assalamu alaikum may Allah have saved your siyam inshaAllah now we head into Al Madina inshaAllah the bus driver's just stopped and you can see over there there's a little camel in the field We actually made it here a lot quicker than expected. It only took us five hours. So we have still about 10 minutes until Iftar. Now we're just waiting here by the main road just to get a taxi to the hotel. Alhamdulillah, we have arrived here in Medina. And so far what we've seen is just absolutely gorgeous. We are actually staying in a block of flats at the moment, so we're just waiting on someone coming over with the key. You can hear the mosque, and there's another mosque over there. We actually just broke the fast in the taxi, and the taxi driver was so lovely, he insisted on giving us dates, and then we give him some chocolate bars that we had in our bag as well. And I just love Islam, you know? Everyone's brothers and sisters, we're all there supporting each other, and for everybody to be breaking the fast at the same time is just something that's so beautiful. I've never witnessed this before, so spending Ramadan in a Muslim country, Alhamdulillah, I'm just really, really enjoying it, really enjoying it. Oh, nice. We've just arrived inside the apartment and it looks absolutely beautiful. I'm going to give you a little tour. So there's a big couch here. I'm about to ruin that. I know. <laughs> so I want to do the video now before we ruin it. TV. What's through here? I guess it's. Oh, massive bedroom. This is so nice. Look at this on the ceiling as well. A massive heart with a heart inside. That's so cute. There's a Quran there. Prayer mat. Let's have a look through here. Oh, a big kitchen. A washing machine as well, that's really handy. Fridge, table, this is really, really nice. Now, through here must be the bathroom. Yeah, large bathroom. This apartment is honestly so, so lovely, so lovely. So we're booked in here for the next five nights and I'm really looking forward to seeing what we get up to here in Medina inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, it's now two days later. Yesterday we just stayed in the apartment and relaxed after all that traveling. Since being in Saudi Arabia, we've not really had any time just to relax. We've just been on the go the whole time. So today inshallah, we are heading to the Prophet's mosque known as Masjid al-Nabawi. I am honestly so, so excited for this. On the TV here in Saudi, on on channel number one they always show Masjid Al Haram and then the Prophet's Mosque as well and yesterday to see everybody there breaking their fast it just looks so so nice so I'm really looking forward to going it's about eight kilometers from where we're staying just now so we've ordered an uber currently the time is 20 to 4 so inshallah we'll be breaking our fast there <laughs> Thank you. 
As we were standing outside the apartment, this man just pulled up and asked us if we were going to Mashhad al Nawawi and he said, just get in my car for free. And <laughs> we ended up getting a lift with him. It was so, so kind of him. We ended up just cancelling the Uber. But I feel like if that was anywhere else and somebody said to you, get in my car and I'll give you a lift for free for eight kilometers, you would think there was something really strange about that and it would kind of give you the fear. I know if that was back home and somebody was waiting outside my house and offered to give me a lift for free, I would think there was definitely something very weird. But here, it's just, everybody's just so unbelievably kind. And yeah, it's just such an amazing place to be. Alhamdulillah, really, really incredible. I've seen this place so many times online. And to actually be here is just so, so incredible, mashallah. agreed to meet at gate number 35 we don't want to make the same mistake as we did in Mashhad al Haram so we should be over there somewhere I'm a little bit late because I got really really lost and I've just been like wandering around trying to find it I can already see him he's the one with the purple jaleva on <laughs> there he is <laughs> I was looking for someone in a purple jaleva because his one really stands out and I knew that I could spot him from the crowd but he had something on his head and from a distance it looked like he had ginger hair and I was like no that's not Hamza <laughs> but he actually switched his hat with somebody else <laughs> I've got a Moroccan jaleva with a Pakistani hat <laughs> so half half yeah but they match really well does it? yeah it's got bits of purple and pink in it yeah mashallah so we just finished catching up with Asr and then Maghrib prayer and broke the fast inside the Prophet's mosque which was just such a beautiful beautiful experience when I first sat down I didn't take a prayer mat with me so I was just sitting on the bare floor so if you are coming here or Masjid al Haram I would definitely take your own prayer mat so because you could just kind of end up sitting on the floor so it's best just to have your own prayer mat but a lovely sister that was sitting next to me actually gave me she had two she gave one to me so I could pray on it which was just so so lovely of her she didn't want to eat a full yogurt so she shared half of hers with me and she was really really lovely and she kept going up and getting me tea and things like that and she was a sister from Saudi Arabia actually here in Medina which was so so nice and I met another auntie as well she was from Pakistan and we exchanged phone numbers to keep in touch so really really nice vibe in there when I went in I felt quite anxious because obviously me and Hamza were separated and I'm here by myself so I am a little bit shy but alhamdulillah I was surrounded by really really beautiful sisters and I had a really lovely time alhamdulillah I really want to go and see the Prophet's grave but you have to book on the app before and it's really really difficult to even find any space as soon as you go on the app everything's just fully booked we have heard from a few people that if you just sit on the app for about half an hour and keep refreshing it it's then gone 
as a, it's gone. a spot should come up. Hamza actually found one for tomorrow at half past three and when he clicked book it has now disappeared so it's really really difficult. Is there now none at all? No. No there's nothing. So we just need to keep sitting on the app refreshing and inshallah something comes up. Because it'll be a real real shame to leave here and not see his grave. It'd be a real real shame. Assalamu alaikum and good morning to you guys. It is now the 29th day of Ramadan. I just cannot believe it. Yesterday we left the apartment and we broke our fast in Masjid al Nabawi again. We spent a lot of time trying to get in to see the Prophet's grave but unfortunately we weren't able to do so. The app is really quite difficult to work. As soon as an appointment becomes available, you just it just goes within that second and it's just really quite difficult. Hamza managed to get one for today, alhamdulillah. He managed to get that, uh, I think the day before yesterday. I think the women get less time to go. We spoke to somebody and they said that the women can go after Fajr and then also after Isha prayer. However, alhamdulillah, I can't believe it, but Hams has actually managed to get me an appointment today as well at 10 o'clock, alhamdulillah, and his appointment's actually at 11, so they're very, very close together. Can't believe that he managed to do it, alhamdulillah. I am just really, really looking forward to hopefully being able to go today. I hope that it all goes ahead. Um, so today we actually are running on not much sleep. We have just been staying up, like I said, from Tarhabi prayer through to Fajr. So it's right now, it's half past eight in the morning. So we've had about three hours sleep. Alhamdulillah though, we are waiting on an Uber and inshallah, we're gonna go in and we're gonna see the Prophet, peace be upon him's grave. Oh, my ticket says half past ten and I tried to get in just now at uh, about twenty past nine and the man says if I give it ten minutes and come back at half past nine then they'll let me go in then so I'm just kind of killing time here. This is where the line starts here. All the way up right there. I showed you what I seen inside of the Prophet's mosque where the grave was. To be honest with you, I'm really, really annoyed about the whole experience because when I arrived in, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube, so I was kind of knowing what to expect, see the big gold gates, and that's what I was looking for. However, when we arrived, because it was so crowded, they just kind of shouted at us, get in a line, get in a line, two rakat, two rakat. So I knew that we did have to do two rakats as soon as we arrived. So I did my prayer, and when I finished, the woman came up to me and says, are you finished now? And I says, yeah. And I expected them to be taken off into a group to then walk round past the tomb. However, I then just get pushed out to the door and they said, you finish, you finish, go, go, go. And I says, no, 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 I haven't seen anything yet. I was really pushed back to the very, very back of the mosque and I seen people at the other end and I said, I haven't been down there but nobody had any English, they couldn't understand what I was trying to say and obviously I don't speak any Arabic so there was a massive language barrier and I don't know, I just feel a, a wee bit upset about it. I kept trying to point and I think they knew what I was saying but they, they just wanted me out because they wanted the next group to come in. So I tried going underneath the barrier to try and walk down to the other end, you know. It's taken us days to be able to even get the permit to go in. I wanted to make the most of it. And they all just started screaming at me, Yalla, bye, 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 yalla, yalla, bye, bye. Haji, haji. Haji, haji, honestly. I'm sick to death of people saying haji, haji. <laughs> I came out and I just felt really upset. I actually wanted to just go back around hoping that they wouldn't recognize who I am but in the app you get a barcode and they scan it so you cannot go back there for one whole year and it has your passport number and everything so I don't know what I've seen to be honest with you 
I'm gonna sh I'm gonna look back over the videos and I'm gonna show them to Hamza because he managed to go in after me so we'll compare and he definitely seen the tomb I really don't think that I did so I'll show him the videos later on and I don't know what to say. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. But I am, I am really disappointed about it. I am. I think next time if I ever come back to Saudi Arabia, inshallah, I think I need to learn some Arabic. I need to know some basic words because the language barrier is is quite difficult. There's not many people that I've come across that speak English, so it makes things quite difficult. And especially when I'm in situations where me and Hams are separated, I'm just completely lost. So I need to brush off my Arabic, inshallah, for next time if I am lucky enough to be here, inshallah. Now we are heading to a very, very special place. The mosque is called Kuba and it is the first ever mosque built in Islam. It was built by the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his companions back in the time of the Hijra. So if you go to this mosque and you pray, it's as if you have performed an entire Umrah. So that is where we're going to just now, inshallah. This is us here, just arrived. It looks absolutely stunning. It's so, so busy here as well, like it is everywhere else. I got in trouble a little bit because I was filming on my GoPro when I went in and the woman told me I'm not allowed to take pictures but there was loads of people inside taking pictures and when I said that to her I said why are you singling me out though there's loads of people here she said camera camera no 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 so I put the GoPro away and I did some videos on my phone because everybody else was so to be honest with you the GoPro is absolutely tiny the phone is way bigger so I don't understand why you wouldn't be allowed a GoPro but you are allowed a phone but anyway it's a really really beautiful mosque on the inside really really stunning the men's looks like it's kind of open plan out in the middle and then the women are at this bit at the back and just lovely detailing on the roof there's like wooden cabinets holding qurans and yeah it's really really stunning in there mashallah i'm just now waiting outside me and hamza said we would meet at this sign and look at all these birds here There's hundreds of them. I'm so grateful that I was able to go in the first ever mosque in Islam. Alhamdulillah. And what a beautiful mosque it is. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And I will see you in the next video, inshallah.